In our Flutter Flame visual novel game, we're controlling the changes to the text with the position of the girl. After the initial three changes to the text, we're going to add a button to make it a tappable. When it's pressed, we'll take some additional actions to change the scene. This is video eight in the playlist tutorial series. The description has the GitHub repository with all the code for this tutorial. You will need to use some type of graphic for the sprite uh, icon button that we'll create. So I'm using these free candy buttons on GameArt 2D. After extracting the icon pack, you'll have a bunch of these beautiful buttons here. So I'm going to select one of the buttons and insert it into my assets slash images folder of my flame game project. I'm going to change the name to next underscore button dot PNG. I'm going to run flutter pub get, then I'm going to go back into the main dot dart, which is in the lib folder. And over at the very bottom, we're going to create a new class for the dialog button, which is going to extend the super class sprite component. We need to create another class because we're going to use a mixin called tappable, and that will add the capability to tap on the sprite component, which will be our button and take an action from there. Once we expand or add the mixin tappable to sprite component, we're going to get access to a method on tap down. So when you tap down on that button icon, uh, we can then have an event and take an action. As a first step, we're not going to use the event or have an action. We'll just create a, a try catch block to uh, handle the event from the tap down. So if uh, it's successful, it's going to return true. And if there's an error with this event, it's going to turn false. The event is just tapping down on the icon. I'm going to use control dot to make sure that the input library from flame is imported into my file here. On line three, you can see that I have flame slash input dot dart that was inputted. For testing purposes, I'll just put a sample debug message here with a print statement just to let us know that when we press on the that icon button, we'll be able to see what's coming up on the debug console. There's different ways to handle the buttons in Flame. You can also use Flutter buttons like the elevated button, uh, Harbor. We're, we're using this technique of using the sprite component and tappable for this tutorial. When we instantiate the button, we're going to have to use the dialog button instead of the sprite component. Uh, they're almost the same. We just extended sprite component uh, with the tappable. And so now we have this variable dialog button. On line 10, we're going to need to extend or, or add the mix in has tappables uh, on flame game itself too. So the game itself has to use this mix in has tappables. I'm also going to create another instance variable for the button size, which is a vector two and make that a final. Now, when the game loads, when you first start up your game, we're now able to start loading the properties for the button, which would include the sprite, uh, the size and the position of the dialog button. So we'll start off with the variable name dialog button. We're going to use a cascade operator, which are these two dots. And then you just have the property name after the two dots, you have an equal sign. And as with the sprite components before, we're going to load the sprite. It's a wait because we have to wait for the sprite to finish loading from the local storage. It's the name of the file next button and then we're going to add the size and if you recall we already specified the size outside of the on load method so we now have this um, a final variable called button size and then we can now specify the position of the button the position of the button is also a vector two i want to place it on the lower right hand side of our mobile app screen so there's two coordinates there's the x where it is so it's going to be all the way on the right hand side initially but you know because the button has some width to it i'm going to subtract the uh, the width of the button itself which is 50 in this case but you can change it uh, in and then i'm going to add a little padding of 10 pixels so that minus 10 it pushes the 
right edge of the button in by 10 pixels. And we'll do a similar process for the Y axis of the button. Uh, so we're going to subtract the height of the button and also have that 10 pixel pad. Because I have a three uh, dialog sections that appear prior to the user taking any interaction with your game, um, I'm going to have the dialog button appear on the screen after the third event, which is the girl and the boy meet and she discloses that she's uh, going to have a child. So we start the game and when they do meet, the button does appear. If you click on the button, you should see the message appear in the debug console. All right, congratulations, you're a mobile app visual novel developer. In the next video, we'll add some additional action when you press the button. I have more dialogue. Subscribe to the channel for the next installment. So have fun, unleash your creativity, and have a wonderful day.